hello, beautiful human. I am Zach. That is Dan, and we welcome to the studio Amber Lou. Hello, <laughs> thank you for having me. Very I'm, I'm a little too comfy right now. This is great. No, it's the right way to be. <laughs> but we really all uh, we're about comfort. Like that's uh, priority number one here. It's, it's an honor to have you. Truly. No, no, thank you for having me. I'm I'm super excited. I'm a little jet lagged, but I'm I'm good. So where did you come from? I just flew in from uh where where was I the past couple days? Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> I was uh in Shanghai uh so. yesterday, so I've just been flying around and I have like no sense of time right now. You are you're incredibly fascinating and I'm excited to get into it because I, I you speak three languages, correct? Yeah. And Mandarin is one of them. Mandarin, Korean, English, a tiny bit of Japanese. That's a that, but it's very, very basic. Do you learn all that while you're here in LA? Um, so most of it's just been on the job. Uh, when I got picked up by my uh, old label, uh, it was just pretty much like, okay, you're going to fly to Korea. You're going to work. And I, I went to like Korean school for like two months. And then I just debuted in my group and just kind of just learning on the job. Just kind of like always like looking around trying to see what the vibe was when people started laughing I would just laugh too and I think Chinese has been kind of the same luckily like I spoke a tiny bit growing up um because my parents so um a lot of it's just been on the fly and a lot of uh using um translation apps and just constantly asking questions like what is this what is this what is this how old were you when you got discovered I was 14 oh dude so like really like yeah. like formidable like your brain is like peak sponge. So you really could be subjected to all these different languages, use the translation apps and actually like soak in what you're learning. I think the problem is now that my brain doesn't really work. <laughs> <laughs> I think cause like when, when I'm like traveling and when we're constantly working, like the hours are kind of brutal. It's yeah. like, I like last week I was on a plane every single day going from city to city, country to country. And I just have no recollection of where I am unless like someone shows me a video of where I was. I'm like, oh God. Um, and now that I'm like 30, I can really feel like, wow, I'm actually forgetting a lot of things, which is, <laughs> it's okay. I, at least I'm having fun. <laughs> I mean, do you want to remember everything? True. I, good point. Right. Maybe not everything. <laughs> I mean, you are part of a massive, massive group, but you yeah. don't see yourself as a K-pop star. I, I like at a, I guess at a certain point yes I was but um I think K-pop for even like for what it is now it's it's just become such a huge phenomenon it's like I think it's just more than just like Korean pop music it's like a whole you get like these cool concepts these these amazing uh synchronized dance choreography videos and you get like a whole, like fashion like all thrown at you all at once so um but right now I think um, since I uh, left my old label, I, I've just, you know, kind of just been wanting to do my own thing. And, you know, whether that's writing in English or Chinese, Korean, Japanese or whatever, like I just kind of want to do it. So I don't really want to, um, I, I obviously don't uh, not love my K-pop past, but it's more like I know now as 30 year old Amber Lou, I'm a, I am a different person. You only come to those conclusions or find those uh, things out as you grow and evolve yeah. as a human being. And, you know, when you're 14, 15, like you've done so little growing and evolving, like you don't know you. I, I feel like it's because of how the industry was. I think now it's now very different, but at the time, everything's just so like, okay, you're going to go to your rehearsal here. Then you're going to go to these five interviews and you got to go back to the same station and rehearse again, and then go to this interview. And you're just constantly doing jobs. It's like, I, I realized like in somewhere in my mid twenties when I was just like so tired and like exhausted, I was just like, I really don't know what happened the past like five, six years. And I kind of uh, wanted to, I don't know, like refine who I was. That's why I started like skateboarding again. Like that's what, that's what I did as a kid. I started playing basketball again. And because like when, when I was 15 and I, uh, I was like 16 when I debuted, um, it was just nonstop. You just don't, you, you get so accustomed to just sleeping like two to three hours a night that you're just kind of like, oh, this is, this is my life now. But I always feel, I always felt that, especially with music and art, you just got to kind of have a life outside of that as well oh. to kind of inspire you to create art. Um, and 
I I spent a lot of time last year actually taking a uh, like a really big break from like the cameras. I, I worked here and there, but really just contemplating about like what is it that I actually want to do because I feel like the 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 K-pop idol industry at the time was just so cutthroat, um, and I just was like, but why am I here then if if this is the way I'm going to work? Is there a different way that I can pursue? Uh, my dreams and to create the art that I want to create so I, I you know did a lot of self-work went to therapy just really tried to slow my life down because I'm a very much like if I'm going to do this I'm going and mm-hmm. I'm not going to stop I burn out really easily um, but I, I know that's not healthy and uh, yeah just t- really taking that time to just be like Amber it's okay to not work 20 hours a day <laughs> but you were conditioned yeah. to do that for yeah. a really long time and i do think it is ironic and really sad that w- the things that they originally signed you for which mm-hmm. was skateboarding and like those are things that they saw in you that yeah. made you different than anybody else but those are also the things that were stripped away from you yeah i i feel like it's just like when th- this industry like in general is just so unpredictable like once you're hot you're hot and you have to grab every single opportunity or you just miss your chance. And I think there's been many times when uh, when when we when my group was like at the top, we just had to keep going because if you stop and you miss your chance and you just kind of, you know, you miss your paycheck, you miss the exposure, you miss whatever opportunity you can have to, um, you know, to put yourself out there because there's definitely been like like being an artist or in, in this industry in general, like your life is going to go up and down constantly. Mm-hmm. And that's why I think a lot of like my artist friends and I really struggle with is that when we're on our downtimes, it's so weird to us. And that's why I think a lot of anxiety and a lot of the, the, our worries just kind of come up. But I think what I've been trying to do is just try to be at peace with that. Be like, yo, I'm on my downtime. I got to go play with my dog. I got to go walk around and play Pokemon Go. Hell yeah. Like, I, I, I'm, I'm learning to enjoy it. So, Is there a part of you that feels like the timing on the group FX was just too early? Because you did reach crazy success in Korea. Like numerous number one albums. But it all came at really interesting times. I feel like if... I wouldn't change anything if I could go back, but I do see that I think my brain just, I wasn't like mature enough to comprehend what was going on. I think also, um, you know, being in a foreign country and not speaking the language um, fluently. So overwhelming. Yeah, being away from family. I didn't really have like a, a, like a stable like pillar to kind of lean on. Um, And I was very much accustomed to just keeping things to myself because it's like when everybody around you uh speaks that language and you don't you're just not really like i don't want to put the effort into trying to find the words because you're also just so exhausted from working every day so i that wasn't healthy and i'm like learning to now be like very confident with just making mistakes while i talk um but I think that's why like now when I'm like working overseas and I'm not really accustomed to the language because, you know, we fly, we fly everywhere <laughs> now. So I'm just like, yeah, if I mess up a word, I'm just like, yeah, I don't speak the language, <laughs> but it's OK. <laughs> Is there like major differences you see in K-pop from when you started to where we're at today? And has it gotten better or worse? Honestly, I actually don't know. Um, I actually ha- like, well, the, the biggest thing that I that I did uh hear about and not a hundred percent but um back then we had these music shows um and they would mostly fall uh they would fall every week on thursday friday saturday sunday and that was like our like promotion cycle so starting from thursday everybody is like super tired you would wake up at like 3, 4 a.m. with your group to go get your hair and makeup done. Um, if it was your first, like, week back to promote your song, you would have, like, this special stage where, like, the stage was all, like, dolled up and really pretty, and it was, like, a like a pre-recording-esque type of thing. Um, and then you would just kind of just film that, then you would stay for the actual live show, and then you would repeat that. Um, and as the years went on, these shows became more frequent, so... There was a show of like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Like it was one every day. And um, depending on, you know, how your label or whatever, um, like organized things, you would most likely go on at least five or four of those. 
Whoa. Um, but now what I hear, and, and you would, oh, sorry. And you would do that for like, I think our first debut song, La Chata, that we did that for like two and a half months, I, f I believe. So it's like, you have like a, a month to two months of like full on promotions every week. However, now I hear it's like, you just do it one for like one week, like one, one round. And then you just kind of go on other platforms. Uh, there's a lot of like YouTube content now. Yeah and a lot more digital content rather than um, traditional media. So that's like the one big change that I have seen. So I hope it's better. And I I think right now with how much more uh, intern, uh, blah, 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 words, sorry, <laughs> uh, with how much more um, international um, K-pop has gotten, uh, I think it's just giving more opportunities to, to artists to just keep traveling and keep promoting their music all around the world. Yes, yeah, become. I, I mean, it was always huge. But now it, it does mean something different, at least yeah. in North America and in a lot of places that it just didn't. But, like, dude, I, I'm a product of the Wonder Girls. Like, yeah. I like I love them. Like, I've yeah. been listening to K-pop for a long time. So, like, really going back to, like, when you, like, I mean, Wonder Girls were around in 2008, 2009, yeah. you know. I've, I feel like back then there was like a, there was a formula. There's, there probably still is that K-pop formula. I haven't been too up to date with everything, but... It was, we have our concept, a very, very distinct concept. Um, I remember back in the day, like 2 p.m. had like a zombie concept. That was pretty cool. And then uh, we had um, like our school school outfit concept as well. I, I think that was like a very common concept that every group kind of did. Um, there was uh, um, uh, one of our groups, uh, Shiny, had this like... Sherlock Holmes uh, esque type of thing. <laughs> I, I I love that song Sherlock. That was so good, um, but like there's a distinct concept, and then you also have a distinct like like they're called point dances, like the the part of the choreography that just kind of really stands out that everybody can kind of follow, like TikTok dances yeah. pretty much. Um, but now I think it's a little bit different. I don't really see that as much now. Um, I could be wrong, but I think the music has definitely um, also gotten a lot more. Uh, I don't know. I, it's it's a lot more diverse now because back then everything kind of just was in this happy, dancey, like totally. performance esque type thing. Now everybody's kind of just like mixing like hip hop, pop music, EDM. So I think in those ways, uh, K pop has evolved a lot. And also the lyrical content. I, oh yeah, I gotta give BTS a lot of credit. Like th they really covered a lot of deep stuff, yeah. especially in their early work yeah. that really touched on uh, points that most kids and most young adults are going through. I think back then also with uh, with with each group, um, this is I know and I don't speak for all groups, but the general like feeling for most members in a group was that you just stay with your group. It maybe one person would kind of go solo, like kind of when the group was on a on a down mm. period. But now it's very common for when groups are on the rise to have their own promotion, to have their own um, solo esque projects. So. Um, I, I think that's where the individuality of each uh, artist is now coming out more and like they can say what they want to say and write what they want to write. And there's a lot of things that like, one, that makes everybody happy. Yeah. But two, it fits the flow of music because mm -hmm. music's democratized and you have to be releasing a ton of music to continue yeah. to be out there. So it, it like works for everybody. Yeah. In a way, like before it would be distracting. You know? Yeah. Now it's not. It's actually yeah. amplification. Because yeah, everybody's just like, what's the new thing? What's the new thing? Yeah. I want more. I want more. So. But yeah. back then it was like, it was more about milking what was and getting it mm -hmm. out to as many people as possible. Yeah. It's different. Yeah. It's it super. And especially with like streaming platforms, YouTube and like, dude, like I was talking with my friend earlier and I was like, dude, we debuted when Instagram wasn't even a thing. That's crazy. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. And like YouTube was just starting to become a thing. And I was just like, man, I feel old <laughs> yes youngins yes <laughs> but when you see who your audience is today is it people who have grown up with you um so there's actually like a mix now which is actually really surprising um there's definitely the really diehard loyal fans that have been with me for the past like 10 plus years um i've been doing um other shows um in china recently and that's been like making my fan base a lot more like i guess a lot of y young new fans are coming Sick. in too so i i'm i'm just like whoa how did you even find me <laughs> so uh, how do you prepare for your your first actual solo project like uh, and and by the way like you have one ep but then your second one is x and it becomes like um a series of three 
Yeah. I feel like I have like the ping pong ball in my head just keeps bouncing around. Um, I like with when I did my mixtape, I was just like in this whole like um, rebellious phase. And I was like, I'm gonna go rogue. Oh, rogue. Oh, I also like the color red. Hmm. What's, what's a really weird like title I could make? And I was like, oh, rogue rouge. <laughs> It'll throw people off because they all they, they look the same <laughs> when, you, when you write it. But um, X was one thing I've always really thought about because uh, the time that I released that EP was the 10th anniversary of when I debuted. Um, it also was like, oh, like X can symbolize things like uh, me crossing into a new chapter of my life, crossing out crossing out like bad memories and bad habits or whatever it may be like I, I I wanted to like have a symbol that just gave a variety of like meaning but still be kind of ambiguous but still make sense and then when the second EP came around I was just like why why I kept saying like w h y y like why why was I thinking these things why I'm like why why Ooh, why x y why oh so I think my my brain just kind of like makes these like little connections and then I was like okay the third one has to be Z so then what's Z about and then um I thought that album was I guess a little bit more bold and like I'm gonna be this this is what I'm about and this is what I want to talk about and I think it's more about not maybe about the song content but the the attitude I had behind writing everything and you have control of your over your art like that you've never had before yeah i everything is just me making decisions like obviously i listen to my team because i'm a little crazy sometimes <laughs> and i'm like my man my manager was like amber before you do these 50 things maybe try doing two of them because you only have like three weeks to do it and i'm like you're right <laughs> what is it like to like go into a studio for the first time and create unencumbered with nobody oh, man. in the way I feel like when I was, so I, I think I've like, I've processed a lot of um, times when I was writing, like back then I was, I think around 2000, like 11, 12 ish was when I actually started going back into the studio and was like, okay, I'm going to start writing music. Uh, obviously I'm like a stupid kid. So I'm just like writing everything and I'm just having fun with it. But I was, I think I was still in the mindset of trying to please my label at the time because they have to buy the song. They have to like it so that they would want it and then they would use it. Um, and I think I was very much trained with that mindset. It was like, oh, how do um, people listen to music? What does my group want? Not what I want. It's like, how, what does my group want? Oh, would they like this melody? If we if we raise the key, would it be better? Or if we like um, arrange it in this way, would it be more suitable for... Um, the idol k-pop idolness of what's going on right now um but what i realized like maybe around like the y y ep was when i was like man i'm still i'm writing like i have to please somebody and i didn't really understand how to please myself mm. in that in the writing process i was just like yeah yeah yeah. it's it's gonna sound great yeah yeah, yeah. but it was just and I, I was very accustomed to a certain type of writing because like um k-pop um, the K-pop that I was writing back then is full of like these like big choruses, big harmonies, um, really just re earwormy like uh, like staccato esque uh, verses, and then you have like a big finish at the end. But then I started um, just trying to write without thinking. Um, it's it's taken me some time, and definitely I flip flop between my two ways of writing but now it's I, I think I'm really just going into the studio and just being all like let's just not have a goal today let's just write whatever we want and I'm, I'm really thankful to be working with my producers because they're so chill and they're like yeah Amber, just do whatever you want and I'm like yeah I, I can do that because <laughs> I like I grew up with that anxiety of like okay when I go to the studio gotta like prepare at least a couple verses i don't want to waste their time i don't want to well i just i really still do don't want to i really still don't want i'm really jet lagged <laughs> <laughs> i really don't want to waste their time still but um i think just letting the creative process just flow on its own is the way that i write right now and um there are definitely times where i'm like okay we only have an hour let's just pump something out um, I do these little writing exercises where the last 30 minutes of the session, we um, we just write something as quick as possible. And uh, it's like and some good stuff has come out of it. Yeah, like what songs have come from that? 
Mm, I think my song Blue came out of that one. Um, I have I have a lot of demos that I haven't released. Be, um, there's there's been a couple that uh, I might release soon, but um, most of it's still in the vault because I I just haven't really had the time to take a stab at it. But I think most a lot of the YEP was that some of the Z and then um, this new pro the No More Sad Songs project. Um, a lot of it's been kind of more on the fly than, uh, you know, than just the traditional like, okay, we're going to sit here. And we're going to write a song. Let's talk about how we feel today. <laughs> it's just more like just throwing things out there and just letting uh, whatever catch, catch. Do you feel you're getting a better product? I think I'm getting a more genuine product. That And that yeah. is what people want. Yeah. I... I I think that's I think now that I'm also giving myself the space to also hey like guys let's 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 stop right now and maybe it's, let's work on a new track or something I'll like, throw that out there to the producers and my team and then um when I have time cuz like you know usually like when you write something you're just like so proud of it and then yeah. you listen to it the next thing you're like oh my gosh this sucks <laughs> but now I'm just kind of like okay Actually, no, this was pretty good. This is actually fun. Okay, now I now I have some ideas to like where we should take production Oh, we should we should just not double the the chorus and just keep it one track. I think giving myself that time to kind of let the song breathe and settle within my head is, uh, I think, been the biggest help and what I've liked about my mo more recent projects because I've just given it time. Easier, easier. Yes. What's the story behind that record? Um, so that song was actually given to me by uh, my team, and I was just like, "Oh, this is a sick track." And I, the writing that I did on that, um, the 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 writers and the producer were, they did an amazing job. And I just kind of changed the story a little bit. Um, I just put my little flip, my little sprinkles on it. Um, but I think when I got that track, and I was like, "Oh, how is this related to me?" I was feeling like I think I was just really burnt out from everything in the industry itself. Um, and because like, this industry is all I know. Um, and I, I love music so much. I love, uh, you know, filming content. I love, you know, being on stage. I love doing shows. But there was always like something where it's just like, wow, I, but I'm just not happy. And I think it was that that conflict in my head where I was like, should I just stop? And w it w would it be easier? Cause like I, with my group being so successful, yes, it's a blessing, but I had like no privacy. I had, I was just scared constantly. I was like, was looking over my shoulder, um, maybe really paranoid. Um, and I think I was just, you know, I grew up with that mindset and I think that anxiety never went away. Um, so I was always really scared to, you know, try, but, um, I think easier was that reflection of like, but I think I just love music too much. Um, I know there's obviously things that I love and hate about the, the industry, but, you know, I'm willing to take those things on to, you know, keep doing what I want to do. And, um, I, I just really yeah, it was just like one of those times where I was just really contemplating whether I should keep going or not. That like song falls on like falls into your zone yeah. at the right time. Yeah, I think I think it did because it made me think about it. Because I think when uh, when a lot of the chaos happens within work, you just really can't you you really can't process things. And when when a song just like hits you like that, you're just like, damn, I gotta think about this stuff now. <laughs> yeah. But that's art. Yeah. And I, I think that's what I really love about music. And with my, my new project, No More Sad Songs, that song too came to me at the right time as well because it, I was still thinking about it. Like, oh, do I want to keep doing this? Do I want to give up? Do I just want to stop everything? And when a song falls into your lap or just like this feeling just comes to you, you're just like, you know, w like screw what everybody says. You know, I, I'm going to make my own path. I'm going to do what I want. I'm going to, and I have that power. I think it was just me, like that, that easier to know more sad songs era was just all about me learning to like retake my own power and re, like realize that like, wow, I can make my own choices. I don't have to listen to other people. I can say no. I don't have to please every person. Um, 
very like very <laughs> like basic basic things that like you know any inspirational <laughs> like inspirational motivational speaker would say i just never really processed it and i was like huh maybe maybe i can just I can have the career that I want and still be happy. And it's just, I have to be the person to make uh, that decision and push myself to keep moving forward. Where do you think the unhappiness comes from? I think it's acceptance is the biggest thing. My mentor talks about that a lot. It's like acceptance is the key to serenity. Serenity. (laughs) Sorry, again, jet lagged. (laughs) Um, Acceptance is the key to serenity. And Oh, even at times when I'm on set, I'm just so tired and I'm just like so overwhelmed. I'm just like, you know what? Right now, I'm working. I'm happy. I'm traveling. I'm putting out music. You know, things could be totally worse. <laughs> I've done worse things. Oh, yeah. I've gone through worse things. And I might be tired right now and that's okay. But, you know, like, look at the flowers around you. Um you know, like enjoy the moment for what it is. And I think that helps me really calm down and really helps me just like recenter, like where I like recenter myself and to clearly see like where I am, I guess. And does that lead us to this no more sad songs era, which. Yeah, I I think that's what it is now. I'm like, I I used to be afraid to like even write about certain things. Like I have a song called ILY. It's about, um, an ex taking my sweater and it's like the, the lyrics get kind of sp- there's like some spicy moments and i was like with my my friend jeremy thurber who who co-wrote it with me he he's been my friend for like like the past decade and he's like amber just write it and i'm like but is it too spicy for people he's like no <laughs> i'm just like wait yeah i'm like 30 i can write this <laughs> stuff so i just like i think it's just this new i, I guess like new amber that just is coming and just being like you know what my past is my past um and i'm i'm supposed to be writing from my experiences i'm supposed to be you know genuinely like being i'm supposed to be i'm supposed to be oh my gosh english i am supposed to be like hold on jet lag put like a dot 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 right here, buffering <laughs> this happened to me on set a couple of days ago like my, my chinese just stops and i'm like like i am i have to be genuine to myself and to my writing if that's um because that's what i want my fans to see and whoever listens to my music to hear is just like somebody who's just really wearing their heart on their sleeves that's what people want to hear like yeah. they want to feel understood by somebody who shares yeah when you're in China, what are you shooting? Are you shooting this producers one on one? Oh, that was so that was two years ago. Sorry, um, I'm, no, you're good. Um, a lot of shows that happen there. Um, I'm uh, sh- uh, shooting a show called um, it's called Ride the Wind, and it's a it's a really cool show because they get 33 women from different parts of the industry. So you have singers, um, you have uh, singers that gets that sing and dance as well. You have actresses, MCs. You have like there's a professional contemporary dancer cool. on on the show as well and we and we quote unquote compete i don't like to compete with them because it's fun it's, uh, but we are put into girl groups oh. and we perform together so that's so random and cool yeah like i i was like thinking about the like americuit Amer- oh, americuin american equivalent to it i'm like man if you got like beyonce and you got like margot robbie <laughs> and like natalie portman like all in, in like 33 women like all successful in their own ways put them in a girl group together like what would happen um i i'm it's it's so fun i've been filming it for the past three months um wow. the the finale is coming up soon so we've just been prepping for that we stay do we stay up for like i've not i, I think there's a couple times on set where i have not slept I just, what? we're just constantly filming it's just it's a lot um, are you running through the routine recording? yeah there's there's like the lessons that we have like our singing lessons dancing lessons we have like other um like there's like shoots in between we have like a reality show segment we have um like when they show all the show rules because every round the, the rules change okay. so right now the thing that i did not you know anticipate was that 
I knew that I was going to be like a group leader at one point for my small group, but now I'm an alliance leader, quote unquote, which is now I there's so there's three of us, um, three big like super groups and I'm the leader of one of them and I'm one of the youngest people on the show. So and also my Chinese is not the best. So I'm just like, wait, I have to lead a group of women and I don't know how to communicate with them that well. <laughs> so sure okay and it was it was the it was a rule that was just like put in place and i'm just like so i can't even say no wow. <laughs> so i'm just like you know what it's a challenge except except what's going on right now i can do it i can do it and like i'm we're killing it right now you're so you're doing it yeah i'm i'm just like this is fun i just have fun um yelling at them I'm like no do it again no dance, no your arm's too low no, I'm like I'm I'm like totally mean to them now. But that show has probably seen by like tens of millions of people now. Yeah, it's it's the biggest show in China right now. Yeah, that's cr okay. Yeah. So okay, dozens of million, like like literally probably four, like could be eighty million people. Sure, I I think so. However, I I I purposely haven't been really watching the show because I'm like kind of scared to watch myself. Wow. That's wild. Because I act a fool on the show. <laughs> I'm, I'm just so like, I don't care. I just walk around and I'm just like, Amber, you have to go to class. I'm like, wait, let me go to this person's room. And let me see if they need help. <laughs> I, I have like, I have, I think the competition aspect of it is what makes it kind of like nerve wracking. But I think for me, what helps me just keep like, keep focus is that I know there's, I, I know that my, I think my dancing skill is one of the stronger mm on the stronger side. So I've just been trying to take time to like help other people because there's people that have never danced and they're doing full on choreography. I'm like, <laughs> how do you expect people to do this? So I've been like, well, that's the show. Yeah. Just watching them figure it out. But what's good is that I've been getting closer with production. So now the choreographers know that when I want to change something, they're just like, yeah, go ahead. I'm cool. like, cool. I just want to make it easier for them. That's there's nothing like TV in China. Yeah, it, there's nothing like it. The, yeah. the, the best television I've seen. Yeah, it, in the production quality, the production's crazy. They yeah. had us like, uh, like they had like this water pool, and we just dance in the water. And they build all these sets, and like there's like I think six to eight performances every episode. Wow. So they make a specific set for each group. Yeah. What is it like to be famous in China? Hmm. I so I actually I don't think I've really like have taken it in because I've just been going from job to job. Yeah. Um, it's obviously really nice to see the fans. Like, how do you get around? Like, do you, like, I, I just well, typically it's it's not as sexy as people think. It's just like I get in the car. There's just fans kind of waiting outside. Um, but most of the time we're in our dorms. So and people like people from the outside aren't allowed in. So, um. I actually really haven't felt it, but uh, what was really cool was I did my first show in Beijing for uh, the start of my new tour. It sold out in 60 seconds. Holy shit. Yeah, and apparently there's still 5,000 people in the waiting line. And I was like, what? Yeah. I was like, wait, this is kind of crazy. Because the, the, the one thing that I was always scared about was people see me on TV. And then when people hear my music, I, I, I feel like there's like an identity split a little bit, I think there can't help but be but like they sang every word and most of my songs are in english they were singing back to me in english and i was like holy crap these these fans are awesome what do you think they under feel understood by what, what do they connect to i don't know, i i feel like i i've i've been very outspoken about like feeling like an outcast i always felt like that and i think i'm I don't really mesh well with certain, I think, I, I don't know. I just like, when I see people, I'm just like, mm, hide. I'm that, <laughs> I, I'm that, I'm that one person that relates to every introvert meme where it's like, people think I'm very extroverted, but I'm, I get, I'm just, I'm just tired a lot. <laughs> I'm just like, ah, uh, people, ah, uh, cool. I'm that person that's like, oh, you want to cancel your plans? That's, that's fine. It's okay. Yes, I canceled. <laughs> I can stay home and play with my dog and play games. Um, I think I'm like that person, but um, forgot what we were talking about. I'm so sorry. What were we talking about? What, what, what do you feel like people connect to? Oh, but, yes. I get what I, you're saying. I, I don't know. I think because also like how like tomboyish I, and like androgynous I look, I was always kind of like the sore thumb. Um, so like growing up, I get, 
kind of picked on a lot um, or, you know, I don't really fit in with the boys. I don't fit in with the girls uh, tradi- like traditionally. So um, I think, I don't know, I think, I think just growing up with that image really, I think, speaks to a lot of people because people that come to my shows are people that are, you know, that kind of look like me too or that are just like, um, I've always been really outspoken about my mental health too and like like how important mental health is. And um, I know it's some, it's not a very fun topic to always talk about, but no. it's something that I feel like should be, you know, talked about. It's the only like, way you break the stereotype. Open. Yeah. And there's a lot of, um, still a lot of, like a lot of people still think that, oh, mental health doesn't exist. You just get over it, you know? Yeah, it's like, yeah, you, you hopefully can go get over it if you give yourself some time to process it and take care of your mental health, but it's really just managed. Yeah. yeah. So I, I think in those ways, uh, my fans and I have a, like a really funny bond. Like we, we like mess with each other on stage. So like I'd be singing, there's this one song called three million years that I absolutely hate. Yeah. What is that? Why do you hate that? <laughs> it's in my notes. Cause it's the most cheesy, stupid love song that I've, I've written. <laughs> it, it's literally like, like, it's been like three million years and I can't shit. It's like, it's so like, like sweet. Yeah, but you know? where were you to write that in life? I, there was, I was dating somebody. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, well, what's, what's a cute thing that I can do? Um, and did you play it for them? Yeah. They didn't like it. <laughs> really? I know. And that's why we're not together. <laughs> Whoa. And you still released it, obviously. Yeah. I, it's like, it's a, it's a, it's a. Like, like, I think a lot of my friends that listen to it, they're like, this is cute. I'm like, why not? What did, did this, what, what did they say about the song? Like, They're just like, ah, uh, it's, it's, it's there, you know? Uh. Wow. Yeah. Why'd you release it then? Hmm. I think it because was. Because it wasn't it was, for them, it was for you and for yeah. everybody else. My, my, my friends uh, had, had their opinions on it. They're like, hey, like this, this, this is cute. And I'll, and one 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 idea that was brought to me was like, hey, it's like it'd be a cute like wedding song, mm-hmm. and I'm like, sure, it's I'll, I'll release it not only for myself but like for people who want to experience true love. Um, so, but like when I I every time I performed that song um, on uh, on tour, I just couldn't stop laughing <laughs> for how stupid it was. <laughs> And um, eventually, I, I think my last North American tour, which was right before the pandemic, uh, I just like eventually took it off the set because it was just so distracting. Damn. And I just could not sing it. But I I know a lot of the fans like it. Um, so for Beijing, I did I did perform it, and I was like, when I started singing, I was like, and then they would. I was like, wait. And I would just do this constantly back and forth. Hmm. And every time I just gave them the mic, they would just like their voices would crescendo into <laughs> this big like choir of just Sick. singing the lyrics. And I was just like, and I'd be like, and I would bring the mic back and keep singing the song. And I just throw it back at them and they would just start singing again. It's so, really not yeah. yours, you know, it's everybody else's. Yeah. There was actually a really cool um, interview I saw about Vanessa Carl, I think Vanessa Carlton, the Thousand Miles yeah. um, uh, artist. How that song has taken so many different, like, like I think so many roles on in our pop culture totally. throughout the years. Um, sh- I think she said something about how like a song become it becomes not yours, like it's for other people, and I think that gave me a lot of perspective too. I was like, wow, yeah, like you should once the music's out, like when you first write it, yeah, it's for you and it's what you want to express, but later on, it just kind of takes a life of its own, and you know, even though you might have outgrown the song or have different feelings about it, uh, to somebody else, it could mean something totally different. Art. Art. By the way, you can listen to all of Amber's music. It's all available on Amazon Music. We're going to put a link in the description below. Uh, you got a song with our friend from Pentatonix, Scott. Yes. yes, I love Scott. How did that come about? So uh, Scott is such a sweetheart. Like we, so we collabed back in like 2017 for uh, uh, Superfruit when him and Mitch were uh, yes. doing their duo. I, I love them so much. And Scott was always just hitting me. He's like, Amber, like, let's just do more stuff. And I'm like, okay. But I'm like, okay, but this is Scott hoeing. <laughs> so, like I want to give him a good one. And I think a lot of my songs at the time were very much just not 
it, it just didn't feel right to send to him yet. And I, I felt like if we were to collab on something, it has to be something that was, I think, deeper and like just meant something more to me. So when the song Can't Go Yet um, came about, I like, wrote it and I, it just kind of sat in the vault, vault for a bit. I uh, it brought it to my manager. I was like, yo, what if Scott were to hop on this? I, w- would it work? He's like, ask him. And I'm like, so I sent the song to Scott and I was like, hey, what do you think about this? And he's like, I love it. And then he just like started sending me ideas like right away. Damn. It was just, it was really fast. So, um, it, it, I mean, it, a little bit different than working with Jackson Wang? Jackson and I, oh, so we actually recorded easier together very like separately and uh we we like we talked here and there i was just like jacks just do whatever you want like i think that's what i want for anybody that i collab with is just like hey do whatever you think is best i want you to have your artistic touch on it's my song yeah but it's like take your part in it like own that um because it's going to be our song in the end um so what you give notes to scott or jackson lang with uh, I think with Scott, what for can't go yet. He had um some like, uh, like octave ideas, and I was like, how about you just take your own part, see how that feels? Because I I don't want him to be. I I wanted. I think the way that I interpreted his first round of ideas was like I didn't want him to be a backing vocal. Yeah. That's how I felt it was. I'm like, I want you to be in the song. So I was like, hey, let's just divide it up. And um, my executive producer, Tom Russo, was uh, was, was like or, like kind of putting the parts and figuring out. He's like, hey, you should actually add uh, extend the bridge and uh, make it this whole like ha-ness. I don't even know what ha-ness means, but <laughs> it's just ha is the way that I can express it. Um, and then, uh, and then when Scott was able to come to the studio, we, he, he, he banged it out in an hour. Damn. I was just like, can you just keep singing? Cause this is great. I get a free concert right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, but like with Jackson, um, for him, I think when he was writing his part for easier, I was like, Hey, just, this is what the song is about. And I know you empathize with it because we've gone through the same stuff together. So just write whatever you want to write and send it to me. So he 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 recorded his part. He sends it back to me. I think the only notes that I gave him was like, hey, I kind of liked what you did at this part. If you could take that energy and bring it to the beginning. Mm-hmm. Um, and then he did write another part. And I was like, nah, I think your old one was better. And then he, I was like, I'm like, but Jackson, that those are just my notes. Just do whatever you feel is best. Because I want you to be comfortable with with your part and proud of your part, so that's that's basically how I do it. I, I don't want to be that like, like no, it has to be exactly like this. <laughs> that's not collaboration, then, right? Yeah, like I, I, it's like I think when someone has to hop, when someone hops on a song, or even with like my producers too, like we're never like okay, you're the producer, you're the songwriter and the artist, or like I'm the artist, so listen to me. It's like there is a mutual understanding of like they my producers make me feel comfortable, Mm -hmm. but they also challenge me at the same time. They're all like, I know you're thinking about this type of production, but how about if we changed it into this? And I'm like, that's cool. I'm like, and then I'll be like, Oh, then half time it here. And then add these, like, I would be all like, add the noise. And they'd be like, (laughs) I think I get what you mean. Mm -hmm. Like it's a, it's a a total collaboration because I don't, I've been in so many rooms where there's a lot of like ego and that was never really, my thing like when when those times happen i just kind of step back and i'm just like you know what i'll just let you guys right i'll like put my two cents in here and there but i just kind of let the session go a little bit i kind of check out i i I still do try to write (laughs) but um but i think the general vibe that i always want for anybody that's working with me or even for me at least too like when i'm working with like um my my team like my assistants or whoever it's just like like I want them to have the freedom to do their job and to, um, I don't, I don't want to micromanage. I don't want to, you know, be in your face. Just like, if you have questions, ask me. And if I have questions, I will ask you. <laughs> By the way, yellow listen to Amber's music. It's all up there on Amazon music link in the description below. And also check her out on the no more sad song store. We'll put a link down there to buy tickets. What are you thinking, Daniel? You guys are releasing a remix soon, right? Yes. Yes, soon. <laughs> <Somewhere. laughs> there's a lot. There's a lot coming down uh, the pipeline. Um, I'm just we're, we're working out the 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 dates. 
but there's a lot coming. Wait, another remix for easier? Yes. Yeah, it's going to be like a remix of a remix. It's So now it's called Harder. Sick. <laughs> and that was just a total joke. And my <laughs> distribution loved it so much. I'm like, sure, why not? <laughs> Bam. Yeah, I get a whole new song out of it. Yeah. Um that um the the easier remix harder will be with uh not only Jackson but a uh, good friend Yoltron and he's an amazing uh producer DJ and I've I've collabed with him before with uh um with oh my gosh the name Blake is Blake Kellen Kellen Quinn there we go. Oh Slugging my god. With sirens? Amber bad. Yes. Amber bad. <laughs> Legend. <laughs> Sorry, jet lagged. I'm very jet lagged. <laughs> you go. Um, to, you can go to sleep now. You deserve rest. <laughs> Listen to all of Amber's music. Seriously, we're gonna put a link in the description below. It's up there on Amazon Music, including that harder remix. Final thoughts, though. I think you guys covered a lot. We did. Yeah, we 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 like bounced everywhere. It was, it was good. Fun. It was nice. It was really fun. Yeah. Thanks for hanging out. Yeah. Thank you for having me. It was really fun. I really appreciate you, Amber yes. Lou. I love your couch. Yeah, I would say take it, but we need it. True. <laughs> I'll buy you guys a new couch. I'll take this one. Uh, that's, uh, that's an iconic one. Just buy yourself your own couch. Bye. <laughs> and for everybody. Woo. Thank you. You're awesome. <laughs>